Did you always want a large family? Asked by Alexa. No. <laughs> I'll no. answer that first part. No. <laughs> I, I, no. It I, just happened that way. Yeah. It, it wasn't the original plan. But, but as I've always stated, once we got to three and then hit four, it actually got easier. It did. The fourth one wasn't even like nothing. I was like, yeah. oh, we have another kid. Okay. I think the transition from two to three kids was the hardest. Yeah, I agree with that. Because when you have... One to two was hard for me, too. Another honesty moment? Yeah. When we were dating and talking about kids and how many we each wanted, I said two. Because I did not personally want to have an only child. He suggested zero. And I said, no. I wasn't in that place at that time. He wasn't. It wasn't something he'd thought of or thought of wanting. And I told him if he was going to be with me, we were having two. Tried to compromise on one. Yeah. I said, nope, going to have two. <laughs> Which ironically took a whole other conversation where I told him, I said, two is a nice even number. I said, okay, well, what happens if we had, you know, ended up with a third one. I said, well, then we'd have four because like, you want to keep an even number. Why? Why does that matter? Well, but then... I the come from a family of three. Yeah. Well, and I did as well before we adopted three more. And then came the funny part of the conversation where well, it was, a, what happens if there were five? I was like, well, after five, all bets are off. That's too many anyhow. So, yeah. I've eaten those words. <laughs> So all bets are off right now. All bets are off. Yeah. No no more yeah. requirement for evens. Um, we have an odd number. This is what God has given us biologically. Who knows, adoption-wise, what will happen in the future. He laughs. Um, we, we have a side agreement on that, which yeah. you guys can ask about, and I'll answer then. Pretty much. <laughs> Does it make finding things like a vehicle difficult? Asked by Liz. Um, actually, Liz asked a couple questions in a row, which kind of go together, but we'll answer them separately. Um, yes and no. It, it makes, like the first vehicle, it makes it easy because we know how many kids we have. We know how many seats we need. Yes, we could do two separate vehicles, but then that's going to cost more car insurance, more gas. And that plays back to the whole money question and having a lot of kids. That costs extra money so you go for the one vehicle that you know everybody fits in mm -hmm. and yeah 12 passenger vehicle well the tricky part is when okay we need to get a second vehicle what do we get That's do we get stuck. enough to fit a few kids do we get enough to fit all the kids like another nine passenger suburban so then there's the option to fit everybody if you need it or do you get something where it only seats like five or seven people yeah. It's a tricky slope there. It, it is because, yeah, you don't know how big or what type of vehicle to get after that point. Um, which, just in case anybody else was wondering too, yes, we had a nine passenger Suburban. And if you're wondering why that didn't work for a family of nine, the ninth seat was basically the bench seat up front. Um, it was a newer one, so the console folded down to be an armrest or flipped up to create the seat, but their feet were on the hump in the front. It's not safe to have a little one up there, but the big ones, our kids have long legs. So it was really tricky to figure out who could sit there and we didn't like doing it too often. Um, it gets that, a little crowded with yeah. me, her, and uh, another kid between us. Exactly. And, and they're getting too tall for that. They're also getting too tall for the very back seat too. Yeah, there wasn't enough leg room. When your oldest kids are as tall as regular adults. Yeah. Yeah, our oldest two are both right about 5'10 now. Yeah. They're 14 and 15. And they were sitting in the very back seat. So, because we have car seats in the middle. So it wasn't working out very well. No, it had a lot of great storage room in the back end, but that doesn't do anything when everybody else is cramped and uncomfortable up front. So it worked for short trips. It was nothing we enjoyed doing longer stretches. Um, and it just became the point where they've all grown and we had to get something bigger. And the only option past that was a 12 passenger. Um, we did do a lot of shopping around. A lot. Um, weighing options, which I mentioned in the Nissan NV video where we finally managed to get it through the car wash. 
and gave the tour of it that we did. We considered the Ford Transit. No. Nope. Um, Chevy makes a classic 12 passenger that everybody has seen everywhere, but they have a lot of rust issues. They have a lot of clear coat paint issues that turn to rust in a matter of just a couple of years and their yeah. production just doesn't seem the quality that it used to be. Right. And then the Ford Transit, you know, we liked them. They looked good, but a lot of them just come with a V6 motor and they're a full unibody, which isn't as great for safety or when it comes to rust. If the unibody rusts out, it's even less safe. So the Nissan MV kind of just fit the bill perfectly. I mean, it, we MV'd it. <laughs> I did I the Envy for quite a while before we ended up with one. I think we only we were on our fifth child when I started dreaming of having one. And then her dreams came true. <laughs> it only took five, two more six kids, years. <laughs> seven kids, and it, it did. Yeah, it came around. And I really do enjoy the van. But yeah, so as far as finding things like a vehicle difficult, options exist. So, no, it's not difficult. Your options, you become more limited. So, in that sense, yeah, it's a little difficult. You don't have as much to choose from. Yeah. And it and depends you just, on what your budget is. You, you find what fits into your budget. Yeah, that's the biggest key. Um, and sometimes it works great and sometimes it doesn't, just like any other vehicle. Okay, Liz also asked, what other challenges do you face in a society that doesn't consider this normal? <laughs> Um, I mentioned before the family passes to different different things. Tourism things. Yeah, different special places. Just going to different museums. Um, a lot of places anymore um, are starting to cap their family memberships at four to five uh, children. And then you have to pay extra for any children after that. Now, one nice thing is if they're under a certain age for some of those places, then you don't have to pay it still. They just don't count yet. Um, a lot of places still just have a blank family pass, which is really nice. Um, but that's one thing we do face. Um, going out to eat can be difficult because they don't always have tables pushed together for that many people. Oh, even at church, it's a you know issue because they do yeah. rows in the seats, and technically, if we had everybody up in church. There's not enough rows in one seat at our church anyways mm -hmm. for us all to sit in one row. Yeah. Unless we're having the little ones sit on our laps and everything else. Right. Which a few of them are small enough we still can. Um, now, when he says if they were all up with us, two of our children go downstairs at church um, for children's church. The baby does stay with us. Our oldest actually sings with the worship team, so she spends half of her time up on the stage. And the 10 year old goes down for kids church um, part way into the service. So really for a lot of the service, it's just the two of us, the baby, and then two of the others. And there's enough seats for us. Yep. So we make it work pretty easily that way. We do, but as they get older, yeah, it gets a little bit trickier. And there have been times we've shown up late enough. We've had to sit in two separate rows. Yep. It happens. It's movie theaters sometimes if they're crowded. Um, we usually pick down days to do those on. We do. And also because it tends to be cheaper when you do certain other days. Yep. Um, well, yeah, otherwise. Kitchen table, you know. Oh, kitchen tables. <laughs> yeah. Do you know how difficult it is to find a large enough kitchen table that is truly sturdy, um, that fits absolutely everybody, and worse yet, a dining room that fits that table? Yeah. Um, we do have this large table in here now that we got a while back and refinished. We have been gifted with an even larger table that I absolutely love. Uh, we haven't finished getting risers for it um, because it was on casters and we didn't want to scratch the floor. But it extends even farther. And so eventually here we're going to be able to swap them out and have an even larger table. This one now sits eight. Yeah. Um, comfortably, which family of nine. So thankfully, the high chair still comes into play. And the last question from Liz was, do you face opposition from extended family regarding size of your family? I don't know that we've necessarily faced opposition. No. I think most of our family knows that, especially me, I'm extremely opinionated and a little outspoken at times. And if they truly... <laughs> 
I know, he's shocked. Uh, <laughs> and if they truly um, voiced opposition directly to us, that they would get informed pretty quickly why that is none of their business, has nothing to do with them, and really don't care. Um, obviously, we love our family and we do care what they think to some extent. Um, but really, they love us as well and they love everything that comes from us. So our children are loved. Um, there has been one person in the past that made some ugly comments. Um, mostly, I think they just had a meltdown in their own life. And it was questions about why would somebody choose to have children um, in general? Uh, why would they do that to themselves, to their bodies and other stuff? I already had four kids at that point. Uh, I don't I don't think those statements were very thought through. But like I said, they were dealing with stuff in their own life. And I think it was a result of a lot of that and their own personal issues. How do you organize school papers, or extracurricular activities, or individual schedules? Asked by Mandy. I'm not a very organized person. <laughs> it, it's, I mean, this is three separate questions in one. School papers, uh, because we homeschool, I have to keep track of certain things. I have file boxes. I keep a lot of things in. Um, we have kind of moved on to binders, which has really been a huge help. So I don't have to keep track of things so individually and they tend to get loose and all that. The binders that the girls use each year, all of their work goes into it with the exception of um, certain workbooks and things. Um, and then I just put the workbooks with their binder. And then at the end of the year, I just keep everything in there. So that binder is their record for the year. I think it's easier since they're not going to school and bringing stuff home randomly that I have to figure out where to put it or what to do with it. Um, I think that makes a huge difference. Extracurricular activities. Uh, it's based on what everybody's interests are. Um, Interest and we base it around our schedule. Yeah. Yeah, I think the extracurricular activities go with the individual schedules. Um, honestly, we are a family unit. Things have to work together. So if somebody wants to do something that conflicts with something else, we have to weigh both of them. Figure out, can we make both of them work? And if not, honestly, which one are we going to choose to happen? Um, so like right now, um, I mentioned our oldest does the worship team for our church. Sunday morning, she goes in two hours before church starts. Uh, so we have a whole routine down now that we have to follow. We get I up in the morning. Get up, take her in, drop her off, come back, help get everybody else ready. Or she has everybody ready by the time I get back. And then we load up and we head in. Um, you know, and Sundays are actually really busy days for us in that sense too, because we come home from church then, feed everybody lunch. We have a little bit of downtime. Sometimes football is involved. It's downtime. It's downtime. And then we have to eat a fairly early dinner because the oldest three then go back to youth group on Sunday evenings. So next year, we'll right. have four going to youth group. Yeah. And, you know, so it helps when all of them can do an activity together like that. Um, we really like things such as that. Um, we've been talking about and just have not managed to actually get it pulled together, but putting the kids in jujitsu, which will be fun for everybody. And it's a full family yeah. event. So it's not just one kid or this class here and this class there. The one we're looking at does the full family together just in different areas of the gym that they use. So again, it's something where everybody's working together no. and getting to do their own. Other than that, for individual schedules, our oldest has volunteered at the outdoor campus. The second oldest did start. Um, they haven't had a massive interest this winter in volunteering lately, uh, so they haven't been going. Otherwise, when they do, they can choose which classes they want to volunteer for. Sometimes they volunteer at the same time and sometimes they don't. Um, when there's things like that, yeah, we just work out what's going to work and what doesn't. Nope. Okay. 